Audiobook Title Darkness Empire, 17-18, by Rida. End of Volume 01. This work belongs to author Rida. Source Scribblehub.com. Chapter 17. An Encounter with the Shadow Garden. As Anus took to the night sky, he found himself perplexed by the unexpected disturbance. His thoughts for some reason wandered to his brother, Sid. There had always been something about Sid that made him wonder if there was more to him than met the eye. It wasn't anything explicit, but a collection of small, seemingly insignificant hints that had aroused Anus's suspicions. His mind also strayed to the elf women he noticed around their mansion from time to time. They were always dressed as maids and seemed to be following Sid around. They were extremely proficient in blending into the background, their presence barely noticeable unless one was actively looking for them. Anas had yet to confront Sid about these suspicions. He was not one to jump to conclusions without substantial evidence. However, the explosion and the sharp magical signature he felt raised further questions. Could Sid be involved somehow? While Anas suspected something, he was yet unaware of Sid's involvement with the Shadow Garden and the true identity of the elf maids. As far as he knew, they were merely maids. Little did he realize that the truth was far more complicated and that he was closer to it than he thought. On the ground, chaos ensued following the explosion. People were shouting, and the city guard was frantically trying to restore order, to no avail. The blast had been unexpected, a terrifying reminder of the fragile peace they lived in. Amidst the pandemonium, Anus touched down from the sky, his crimson eyes immediately finding the epicenter of the explosion. His white uniform billowed behind him as he walked calmly towards the smoldering remains of what once was a substantial warehouse. His gaze scanned the ruins and the mutilated human corpses, not missing a single detail. Flickers of highly concentrated magic, remnants of the explosion's force, lingered in the air. Anos closed his eyes, allowing the subtle energy to swirl around him, seeping into his senses. He recognized the magic signature immediately. It was familiar, a signature he had not sensed for quite some time. Remembering the past encounter, Anas's brows furrowed. Months ago, a female beastkin had attacked him in the Kajnu estate forest. The attacker had exhibited considerable strength and displayed a unique magical signature. At the time, Anas didn't think much of it, dismissing the attack as an anomaly or an impulsive act of a hot-headed beastkin. However, in the light of this explosion and the suspicions he had begun to harbor about Sid, Anas began to consider the attack in a new light. The beastkin, he remembered, was brimming with uncontrolled excitement, attacking in a headstrong manner that bordered on immature. Her tactics, although raw and unrefined, were relentless, like a wild animal going for the kill. Despite her failure to land a significant blow on him, Anas could sense an undercurrent of raw power within her. Now, as he pondered over the current events, a thought struck him. The magical signature of the beastkin who had attacked him in the past and failed, although not identical, bore striking similarities to that of the explosion. Could it be that the beastkin was linked to this disturbance? Suddenly, the elf maids, the secretive behavior of his brother Sid, and the attacking beastkin seemed to form a vague, interconnected web in his mind. Yet, he wasn't sure how to piece together these separate incidents into a coherent story. The explosion, he decided, was not a random act of violence. It was a calculated move, indicating an underlying motive that he could not yet grasp. Just as Anaus was about to delve deeper into his thoughts, a rush of wind, followed by an intensely aggressive magic aura, pulled him out of his reverie. With swift reflexes, he turned around to face the sudden threat but it was too late. The attacker, a muscular beastkin woman wearing a strange dark suit, was an unusual spectacle under the moonlight. Her slitted eyes gleamed with excitement, and her mouth stretched into a wide grin, showcasing her sharp, beast-like teeth. Anas recognized her from their previous encounter in the forest, but her name was unknown to him. At that time he was busy gathering mushrooms for his important gratin and so, he didn't even bother to ask the screaming beastkin woman escaping with her tail between her legs. Anos barely had time to brace himself before the beastkin woman collided into him, their bodies enveloped in a maelstrom of clashing magical energy. He could immediately sense her immense strength, the same raw and wild power that had characterized their previous encounter. 
Back for more beating are you? Anus managed to say, his voice steady despite the ferocious onslaught. His muscles strained to maintain equilibrium against the beastkin's unyielding force, his magic flaring out in response to strengthen his physical power. Her answer was a guttural growl, her eyes flashing with uncontrolled excitement. You bet, she declared, her voice resonating with an untamed fervor. She pushed harder, her fingers digging into Anas's shoulders and even drawing some blood, the thrill of the battle clearly intoxicating her. Hmm. For Anas, the situation was becoming clearer. The Beastkin's presence here, so soon after the explosion, could not be a coincidence. He realized that this could be the perfect opportunity to dig deeper into the mystery he was facing. Yet, he had to first deal with the Beastkin woman, who was now fully engaged in the combat, reveling in the adrenaline rush. As the two figures were locked in a fierce confrontation, something bizarre unfolded. Delta, wild-eyed and brimming with adrenaline, suddenly yelled, Delta gonna smash tiny demon king. She tried to increase the force of her attack but instead ended up losing her footing and sliding on a nearby pebble, momentarily lessening her grip on Anas. In the process, she bumped into a barrel that was lying nearby, sending it spinning into the air. Delta meant to do that, she muttered, picking herself up and dusting her hands, her chest puffing out with false pride. Anas, maintaining his calm demeanor despite the somewhat chaotic combat, simply nodded. If you say so, he said, his voice steady. His hand flicked, summoning a gust of wind that brought the barrel back down from its aerial trajectory, landing it safely on the ground. With a rallying cry, Delta charged again. Delta not scared. Delta gonna win this time. Unfortunately, her foot found the same traitorous pebble and she tumbled headlong into the remains of a collapsed wall, causing a cloud of dust and debris to rise. Anos watched as Delta clumsily extracted herself from the rubble, her face a mixture of surprise and embarrassment. He asked, expression unchanged, Is that part of your strategy too? Delta, adapting, she mumbled, her cheeks reddening under the moonlight. As the dust settled, Anos found himself facing the determined beastkin once again. The combat was turning out to be quite a spectacle, a bewildering blend of Delta's comical blunders and Anus's stoic reactions. Even though Delta's antics were amusing, Anus knew he had a bigger mystery to unravel. Every encounter, every clue was leading him deeper into the labyrinth of uncertainty. And Delta, in her own peculiar way, seemed to be another piece of this complex puzzle. As if his own human brother alone wasn't enough. Exhausted mentally, the demon king of Turney muttered, This is becoming absurd. What did you just say? Meanwhile, Alpha, receiving the update from one of the Vanguard teams, felt a wave of unease wash over her. Delta's attack on Anus was premature, unplanned, and therefore dangerous. She knew that her impulsive behavior could lead to the exposure of the Shadow Garden, something she had painstakingly avoided until now. As Alpha rushed to where Delta and Anus were clashing, she couldn't help but worry about the imminent disaster. Delta was not only a valuable ally but also a dear friend. The thought of her coming to harm worried her greatly. Yet, she was equally concerned about the potential exposure of their secret operations, especially to the unknown variable known as Anos Voldegod. However, Alpha's worst fear wasn't just the potential revelation of their secret organization, but the potential of Shadow's Sid identity getting caught up in the crossfire. After all, Anus wasn't just the demon king of tyranny. He was also his brother in public. Caught in a whirlwind of chaotic thoughts and conflicting emotions, Alpha could only hope that she could mitigate the damage before it was too late. After all, the Shadow Garden wasn't ready to face Anus, not yet. Not without Shadow's approval. As Alpha approached the intense clash between Delta and Anus, her mind raced with the weight of the situation. She knew the danger that lurked in the potential exposure of the Shadow Garden. The members understandably harbored a deep-seated hatred for Anus, she herself included. However, their true identities as operatives must remain concealed at all costs. Alpha's voice rang out with a sense of urgency, commanding Delta's attention. Delta, stand down, she exclaimed, her tone authoritative yet tinged with concern. This is not the way. We cannot risk exposing ourselves or our mission. Delta, caught up in her adrenaline-fueled aggression, 
momentarily faltered as Alpha's words pierced through her rage. She looked into Alpha's eyes, a mix of frustration and determination reflecting in her own. B but he could be an enemy. Enemy. Must kill. Delta argued, her voice still laced with feral hostility. Alpha placed a resolute hand on Delta's arm, her gaze unwavering. I understand your concerns, Delta, but we must exercise caution and gather more information before making any assumptions, she reasoned, her voice calm yet firm. We cannot afford to act on incomplete knowledge. Trust in our training and our ability to navigate through the shadows. Delta hesitated, her grip on Anas's shoulders loosening as she absorbed Alpha's words. She knew the logic in Alpha's words, even if it went against her instincts. Reluctantly, she took a step back from Anas, her intense gaze fixed upon him. Anas, slightly taken aback by the sudden halt in the battle, observed the exchange between the elf woman and the beastkin named Delta with a mixture of curiosity and suspicion. The tension in the air was palpable, and he couldn't shake off the feeling that there was more to this conflict than met the eye. Alpha turned her attention to Anas, her fierce eyes meeting his, her expression turning sour. Anas Voldegod, I apologize for Delta's rash actions, she spoke with a blend of disgust and determination. The Shadow Garden harbors deep-seated suspicions towards you, and it has clouded her judgment. She acted on her own accord, without the knowledge or permission of the Shadow Garden. We mean you no harm, yet, Anas regarded the elf woman with a penetrating gaze, trying to discern the truth in her words. He had suspected a connection between these suspicious elf-maids, Sid, and the recent events, and now, it seemed he was inching closer to uncovering the truth. Shadow Garden? Explain, Anas demanded, his voice firm but measured. What is the Shadow Garden's involvement in all of this? And why did your companion attack me? Alpha hesitated for a moment, her eyes shifting briefly to Delta before focusing on Anas. She made a decision realizing that partial disclosure might be necessary to avert further conflict. The Shadow Garden is an organization that operates in the shadows, striving for peace and balance in the world. Alpha, speaking with concise deliberation, only introduced the Shadow Garden as an enigmatic entity working discreetly to establish harmony and equilibrium throughout the world. Silence filled the air. That's all? Anas questioned, his face contorted in a stern expression. Alpha confirmed arrogantly, yes. What does your organization have to do with my brother, Sid? Anus inquired, his tone suddenly turning cold. Hmph. I will not answer that, Alpha retorted. Anus's eyes suddenly narrowed. He took a step forward. His body started radiating a menacing and tyrannical aura. The atmosphere around him grew heavy with a crushing pressure suddenly appearing out of nowhere. All the Shadow Garden members hiding in the darkness tensed and gulped nervously. Listen carefully, elf woman, Anas said, his voice low and commanding. What I said earlier was not a question. It was an order. As if to emphasize his point, Anas suddenly lunged forward, his hand extending with astonishing speed to seize Delta by the throat. His grip was incredibly firm but still controlled, a silent display of his true power. Delta gasped her slitted pupils widening with shock and confusion as she struggled violently against Anas's unyielding grasp. Despite her relentless punches, slashes, and bites into his arm, Anas refused to release his grip. Calmly disregarding the ferocious beast hanging from his left hand as he nonchalantly turned his head to address the stunned Alpha. I am not someone you should underestimate, Anas continued dangerously, his tone icy and unwavering. If you value your companion's life, you will answer my questions truthfully. Alpha, caught off guard by Anas's sudden aggression, could only watch helplessly as he held Delta hostage. She realized the gravity of the situation and the potential consequences that could unfold. Forgive me, Shadow, but there is no other way. Alpha bit her lips in frustration and sighed as she was about to signal everyone to attack Anas all at once. When, Thuma, in an abrupt motion, Anas sharply turned his head to the side and then a smirk formed on his face as he surprisingly released his grip on Delta. You are lucky, it seems the clone has already found its target. W what? Alpha exclaimed, confusion etched across her face. Clone? What are you talking about? 
Anos paid no attention to her or the growling Delta stealthily creeping behind him, as he absorbed the information conveyed by the clone in his mind. A flicker of surprise momentarily danced in Anos's eyes, unbeknownst to him that his unconscious utterance of the word shadow had alerted Alpha to a great extent. Alpha's eyes widened in realization, a sense of panic rising within her. No, this can't be. We have to stop him, she exclaimed, her voice tinged with unease. Anus, however, seemed unperturbed by Alpha's outburst. He had already made up his mind about his next course of action. You and your shadow garden have secrets, elf woman, Anus said, his voice laced with calm indifference. But mark my words, I will uncover them soon, whether you like it or not. No! Delta, stop him, kill, get him, Sue. 4. Chapter 18. I am Atomic. First volume Yendi. Next. Earlier in the evening, I received a dubious letter supposedly from Alexia. It was an amateurish attempt to entrap me. The letter asked me to meet in some obscure alley, an obvious trap. But instead of sidestepping the bait, I decided to spring the trap on my own terms. As I entered the designated spot, guess who I found lurking in the shadows? Two knights, straight out of a medieval comic book. And guess what? These were the same dudes who made my life miserable back in prison. Talk about a reunion. But here's the thing. I was more prepared than a boy scout on a survival expedition. My sword sliced through them like a hot knife through a butter sculpture at a summer fair. They were so stunned. It was like they were trying to process the latest smartphone update. Bam! Down they went. Lifeless bodies meeting the filthy floor of the alley. Those poor souls, they really should have learned their lesson after my little bro unleashed a can of whoop ass on them the last time around. I mean, seriously, did they really think it was a good idea to go up against us again? It's like they were begging for a round two of getting their sorry behinds handed to them on a silver platter. Guess they just couldn't resist the temptation of another royal be down. Oh well, their loss. They really believe they could take on the big brother of that ridiculously overpowered last boss character. Well, sorry not sorry, guys. That one's on me. Rest in pieces, my misguided friends. Uh, I mean R.I.P. No, um, rest in peace. Amen. As I dealt with those pesky assassins, my detective skills kicked in, and I decided to play detective myself. I followed the breadcrumbs they left behind, which happened to be a tracking device they cleverly attached to me. Sneaky, huh? But hey, I'm no rookie. Following the signal. I ventured into an underground tunnel. It was like stepping into a secret lair, minus the cool gadgets. And guess what? Right in the middle of that dark and eerie place, a showdown was unfolding between Xenon and Alexia. Talk about being at the right place at the wrong time. Now let me tell you, my instincts were on fire. My mob sensors were hyperactive, sensing something fishy about that Alexia. And don't get me started on my uncanny ability to detect mana. I mean, it's like I have a sixth sense for magical stuff. Oh, and did I mention my previous encounter with the real Alexia? Yeah, I've got a history with her, but that's a story for another time. So there I stood, watching the clone getting slaughtered without batting an eye. I knew she was just a cheap imitation, not the real deal. And boy, did she go out with a bang. Dramatic self-destruction. Check. And as if that wasn't enough... Xenon decided to undergo a monstrous makeover right before my eyes. You'd think I'd be shocked, right? Nope, not even close. I was like, well, that's one way to make an entrance. Man, my life is full of surprises, but I take it all in stride. No need for flinching when you've seen it all. The clone's demise and Xenon's grotesque transformation? Just another day in the crazy world I call home. Shit, he's looking at me. Oh boy. Talk about an intense stare down. That dude's gaze is fixated on me. And let me tell you, it's enough to make your stomach churn. Seriously, he's giving off vibes that could make a circus clown squirm. And let's talk about his appearance, shall we? Xenon, the guy who's making my eyes regret their ability to see. I mean, picture a lesbian American grandma on a serious dose of steroids. It's like someone turned up the volume on the weirdness dial and forgot to hit the mute button. But hey, I'm not one to judge. Okay, who am I kidding? It's hard not to be grossed out by this whole situation. It's like witnessing a train wreck in slow motion, 
except the train is being driven by a mutated American grandma. Yikes. Damn. Seriously, that dude's fucked up gaze locked onto me like I owed him money. Xenon slowly raised his head, directing his ugly countenance toward Shadow. You scoundrel. W what have you done to me? He exclaimed. Nothing, Shadow replied, with a chilling calmness. You did this to yourself. Desperation clawed at Xenon's gut. His skin was too tight, his bones ached with an unnatural intensity, and the beast within him snarled and scratched at his psyche. The reality of what had happened, of what he had become, was too much to bear. He was a man of order, of power and prestige, reduced to a grotesque and ugly monster. I'm... I'm a mere monster? Xenon's voice trembled with incredulity and fear, his monstrous eyes wide with shock. Even if he took the pills, Xenon was pretty sure the side effects would never be this severe. Especially, when he still has self-awareness and is sane after the transformation is finished. This is definitely not an awakening. Pathetic, Shadow scoffed, his piercing gaze freezing the air. No one to blame but yourself, mere human husk. Your wretched fate was sealed the moment you laid a hand on that thing. Return me back, Xenon roared, lunging at Shadow. But Shadow moved like a wisp of smoke, fluid and seamless, effortlessly avoiding Xenon's frantic attack. Xenon howled, a terrible, soul-wrenching noise that echoed off the walls of the cavernous tunnel. His monstrous body crashed into the stone wall, fragments of rock clattering to the ground around him. Change me back, Xenon screamed, swinging wildly at Shadow. But it was useless. Shadow was always a step ahead, his movements elusive and unpredictable. Xenon's attacks landed on nothing but air. Unsightly, Shadow finally said, halting Xenon's desperate assault with a single, powerful hand. His fingers curled around Xenon's throat, squeezing just hard enough to hold him in place, but not enough to strangle him. I warned you, but you made your choice. Now you live with the consequences. Xenon could do nothing but stare in horrified silence at the man in front of him. His mind was a whirl of terror and regret. He had never imagined such a fate for himself. But there was no turning back now. He was a lowly monster, a beast, a grotesque parody of the man he once was. And all of this happened because he had made the mistake of underestimating this man that was now looking at him with disdain. Shadow released Xenon, letting him stumble back and collapse on the ground. The once proud man was now nothing more than a broken beast, looking down in despair and regret. You, you can't leave me like this, Xenon gasped, looking up at Shadow with pleading eyes. Sid under his mysterious persona Shadow, prepared to make his dramatic exit. Yet he paused just before his departure, allowing his gaze to veer subtly sideways. H.M.? A pair of ominously familiar, deep red eyes met his. For a moment, Shadow questioned the accuracy of his own vision. Standing there and leaning nonchalantly against the stone wall while observing him, was none other than his younger brother, Anas Voldigod. Anas had been silently scrutinizing the skirmish between Shadow and Xenon, his ruby eyes glittering with a blend of interest and delight. Intriguing, he commented, his tone cool and measured. You've certainly been quite engaged, Sid. I must say, your presence in this unexpected location comes as quite a surprise. Outwardly, Shadow projected an image of serenity, but his internal state was far from tranquil. He was busily piecing together how Anos had managed to ambush him, remaining undetected until now. Dear brother, if I'm not mistaken, it was only yesterday that I intervened to save you from a certain death sentence. And now, strangely enough, I find you single-handedly dispatching the man who framed you with such ease that it raises, you know, quite the suspicions. I, H.M.? Speak up, I didn't catch that. I am, say it again, I am atomic. What? As Shadow's declaration reverberated through the tunnels, a surge of unfathomable power surged from his being. The atomic energy within him instantly exploded outward engulfing the underground caverns in an immense blaze of raw thermonuclear force. The terrifying shockwave rippled through the tunnels with a deafening roar, obliterating everything in its path. The ground quaked violently, and the walls crumbled under the overwhelming might of the explosion. The force extended far beyond the confines of the tunnels, reaching upward to the capital city above. In a blinding flash, 
an entire section of the capital was wiped away as if it had never existed. Buildings were reduced to rubble, and the bustling streets were swallowed by chaos and destruction. Panic and terror gripped the surviving inhabitants as they witnessed the catastrophic aftermath. Their dark sky became white in the middle of the night. Anas remained calm inside his timely conjured barrier, his expression unwavering as he observed the spectacle unfolding before him. He knew of his human brother's hidden potential, having long suspected the depth of Sid's true abilities. Xenon, however, met a fate far more severe. The force of the nuclear explosion consumed him entirely, erasing his monstrous existence from existence itself. There was nothing left but an echo of his anguished cry, swallowed by the maelstrom of destruction. Silence settled upon the shattered remains of the capital city block as the dust began to settle. The once thriving district now lay in ruin, a testament to the cataclysmic clash between Shadow's unleashed atomic power and the world around him. Amidst the wreckage, Anus remained, untouched by the devastation. He turned his gaze toward the epicenter of the destruction, where his human brother had once stood. A faint smile played upon his lips, showing a tiny culmination of excitement and anticipation. He finally cracked open one of the secrets of his brother Sid. Holy fucking shit man, that guy scared the hell out of me. Holy smokes, I nearly peed my pants when he popped out of fucking nowhere. That really scared the living daylights out of me. I mean, we're talking about a level of fright that had me blurting out I am atomic and going into full-on pilot mode without even thinking twice. It was like my body decided to activate its own superhero mode, ready to take on whatever had just spooked the bejesus out of me. Talk about a reflex action on turbocharged cocaine. Fuck. Oh no. Did I seriously just vaporize my own little bro with a jump scare? This is beyond messed up man. I practically turned his face into a cosmic fireworks display. Like, I literally nuked his fucking face. But hey, let's not panic just yet. We're talking about my little bro here. The ultimate last boss level character. He's got more magical tricks up his sleeve than a circus performer. I bet he whipped out some epic barrier magic stuff or some super duper shield to protect himself from my accidental attack. Few crisis averted. I hope. Shadow, or should I say, Sid Anus said, suddenly emerging from a dark alley unscathed. His eyes sparkled with humor and curiosity. I have to admit, your true nature is more fascinating than I ever imagined. I let out a huge sigh of relief. Crisis averted, indeed. Dude, I really didn't mean to do that. It was like a surprise attack, you know? A jump scare gone wild. Jump scare? Fufu, you mean a rather serious panic attack issue, Anus teased, raising an eyebrow with a mischievous grin. Whatever, I retorted, feeling a tinge of embarrassment creeping in. You're the bastard who sneaked up on me like a stealthy fucking ninja cat. Hey, watch your language. Oh, give it a rest, man. No one cares about that stuff. It's just you and me in this crazy moment. All right. Fair enough, Anus replied, his expression then turned pensive. However, I'm intrigued. How did you uncover this? I am atomic ability? I've never encountered such a type of magic spell. Considering the minuscule quantity of magical energy you expended, the resulting output is extraordinarily disproportionate. I worry that if you were to utilize your full reserves of magical energy, you might unintentionally obliterate this entire planet. Well that's the million dollar question, my friend, I said, scratching my head in thought. I guess it's part of my genetically blessed older sibling status. Just like you rock the whole fantasy magic gig, I've got this thing going on. I see, Anus nodded, a smug smile forming on his lips. It seems we have much to learn from each other, oh mighty big brother. Oh, so now you're making fun of me because you're taller? I shot back, unable to resist a playful jab. It's all in your imagination, dear big brother. Cut it out, you cheeky little shit. The banter between me and Anus was nothing short of entertaining. It was like dealing with a cheeky little bro, but with the added bonus of him being an almighty, all-powerful last boss character who had a knack for bad jokes and also for showing up at the most unexpected times. Wait, hold up a sec, we're breaking character here. I shouted, feeling a sudden anomaly in the atmosphere. See you later, man. With that, I quickly made my escape, leaving Anas behind, his laughter echoing in the alley. As I walked away, 
I couldn't help but also chuckle at the absurdity of the situation. It's not every day you find yourself bantering with the almighty last boss himself. Ah, the joys of living in a world where reality and fiction blend together in the most unexpected ways. And so, with resolute determination, I ascended into the heavens, my voice resounding with sublime power, as I proclaimed, Unleash, O mighty dominion! Embark upon the clandestine celestial minuet that lies ahead, draped in enigma and reverence. Thus, propelled by a surge of adrenaline, I soared towards the lunar orb, an emblem of audacious ambition against the vast expanse of the night sky. Author's Note Alrighty, folks, we've reached the grand finale of the first volume of this epic tale. Get ready for the highly anticipated second volume, where we'll dive headfirst into the thrilling Academy setting. With Anos finally unveiling Sid's shadow alter ego, you can bet things are about to get seriously intriguing. Buckle up for an exhilarating ride. Second volume cover, by Sivan underscore Voldegode. Those reading the story in fanfiction underscore net, check the images in webnovel underscore com, or wattpad underscore com, or scribblehub underscore com. The story title is the same across all platforms. 2. 